Hello and welcome to the Engineer's Toolbox. This is where I'll showcase some mods that will be useful for your engineering needs, which every engineer should have in their toolbox. Okay, I've got something prepared in the VAB. Let's enable the sound. Yep, that's good. Okay, right, here you have you can see I've built a rocket by here and you have some numbers up here. Okay, this is the Kerbal Engineer Redux mod. You can nice little handy button there. Uh, from what, from the old days when you used to download this mod, you used to have to, where is it? Utility, no, it's science, that's it. You used to have to be, you have to add one of these parts, either that one there, you used to have two chips, I can't, don't know what's happened to the other one. And you've got this little, nice little nifty computer here. Let's zoom in on that. I always love that thing because it's whirring away. It's, oh, it's all the old tapes, the um, video tape sort of stuff. In the olden days, they used to have huge computers. And the only way you could store data was not on chips like this. Let's get rid of them. You had to store them on tape because you had limited memory of your computer. But this is Kerbal Space Program. Even though that's retro, it's still cool. And anyway, this is what it gives you, at least in the VAB. It's a tool to help you build. So now let's say if you wanted to go to the man. I'll flash... No, I won't flash up. I was going to flash up a... What you call it? A um, Delta V map on what you require to get to the man. But we'll forget that. I'll talk you through what this is useful. Say you needed... Uh, to get into orbit 4,500 meters per second. Well, if you look here, this is your Delta V. And once you built your rocket up, it'll show you your Delta V for each of your stages that are shown down here on the right. And you can see the first stage is going to go out quickly because I've linked it up in Asparagus staging. Do not worry about that if you don't know about Asparagus staging or YouTube it. It's a very handy feature. I will be doing a tutorial of it soon. And once you've once that's the stage gone, two rockets gone, and it'll tell you the next Delta V, the next stage, next stage. And you'll see all through those three stages will be enough to get for us to get into orbit. And that's all this down here. And then this top bit then will get us to the man. Okay, let's go through this tool and what it is. First off, you've got the cost, how much it's going to cost, the maximum cost. And if you say you empty the fuel tanks, that's how much it costs without any of the fuel. Now you have the mass of the object of the rocket. Sorry, no object. This is no object. It's my rocket. Right, you have the mass, which is a total 50 tons. I think that's right. 50,000 kilograms is 50 tons. Yes, right. No, yeah. And you have then what the mass is without the fuel. And that's a lot of fuel. Yes, when you build a rocket, most of it is going to be fuel. And you're going to be using it up within minutes. You see here, burn time. We'll get that in, to that in a moment. Right, next thing you need to know is ISP. And this is very important. Especially for your, the efficiency of your rocket. That will get burned to orbit. Or in around in space. Okay, first off, this is showing the ISP of the rocket, which is in a vacuum. Now, you see, the higher the ISP number, by the way, the more efficient your rocket is, the more Delta V you have for your fuel for that particular rocket engine. So you see the first stage is not that high because it's in the atmosphere. And then the next stage, the, the top part, the lander, you could call it, has a higher ISP, which is going to be in space. But this is in the atmosphere. And if I click atmosphere up here, it then these ISP numbers change. And the reason for that is because some rocket engines are built to use in the atmosphere, but some are built more for use in space. And you do have ones which are sort of in between or ones which can change the ISP when you're transitioning from the atmosphere to space. But this is not... Most Kerbal Space Program engines don't have that. And you can see in the atmosphere, the bottom stage, which is in the atmosphere, has a better ISP than the lander, which is what we want. So, atmosphere stage, space stage. Hey, <laughs> cool, huh? And what else changes? Oh, yeah, your delta V does change and your rocket burn time does change. Now, 
before we get to Delta V, let's go to the next one. Thrust. Yes, your rockets have fixed thrust. Doesn't matter whether you're up here or not. That's sort of kill the Newtons. How much? Um, so if you put a heavy object on your hand with the gravity pulling it down, that's exerting a pressure which you can measure in kilonewtons. Just think of it like that. So your rocket is pushing down, which in turn pushes it up. Uh, Newton's third law of motion. <laughs> Look it up. Now you've got torque. What the hell is that? Took me a few moments to think what the hell is that. I thought perhaps it's the way you can control your rocket to turn around. No, nothing's been shown, because even though I've got these control winglets on here. And so I thought, I'll go to the aerodynamics. I will pick a wing. A chicken wing. Or a wing of an aircraft. So I put this wing on there. And now this is ex exhausting, exerting a sideways force because this is this will give lift in one direction. And you can see the torque has now increased. So if I launch this, this rocket would actually spin as it was launching, as it was going through the atmosphere because of the lift this wing would have caused in one direction. And not the band, no. I do not watch one direction. Ugh. Okay, let's take that off. Now we know what torque is. It's sort of like the rotation of the rocket. So if you know, if you see anything on this and you just want to go straight up, you know you're going to have some problems. Now next you have the thrust to weight ratio. Ah, this you should know. Well, if you don't, this is what it is. Thrust to weight ratio is the ratio at which your rocket can get off the ground. Now we're on curving and you see you can change your a stat of the body you're on. Let's go back to Kirby. And thrust waste ratio when we first launch will be at 1.29. Which you need this thrust to weight ratio to be above one to get off the launch pad. So this is gonna be a bit slow at 1.29 is not the high over one. As we go further up, as we lose oh yes, we've got two numbers here. As you lose fuel, this will increase to well, your thrust to weight ratio, your mass of your rocket will decrease and your thrust to weight ratio will go up and so forth so forth through the stages. Now I'm going too far into this perhaps, so let's have a look at the delta V. This gives you the stats of your delta V as you're in the atmosphere and out. So this is enough for us to get into orbit, about 4,000 meters per second. So let's go with that and then the burn time of your rocket there. Now I said there's two mods, let's show you the second one, which is the mech jet mod. Now you see this little tab here? Now you don't, haha. <laughs> this part you have to add to your craft. There's two parts you could add for the mech jet. That's this one, which would be sort of like a uh, robotic command part if I place him there. He has a weird eye, look, he's opening his eye. And he looks at you, yes, it's a bit creepy. But it's a cool mod because it has a lot of automation when you're in flight. But it also gives you the stats that the other ones do. But for some reason, it's broken when you're in the VAB. See? These numbers don't match up. But when I launch, it seems to be fine. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go and launch this craft, and I can show you more what the mech jet can do, which the Kerbal Engineering Redux can't. So I'll meet you on the launch pad. Welcome to the launch pad, where me and Jeb are going to show you exactly what these mods can do in flight. Now, first off, you'll notice a slight difference. You have these heads or heads up display up here, and these will you can alter these. These are from the Kerbal Engineer Redux mod. They'll show you sort of like your apoapsis height and time to apoapsis, periapsis, time to periapsis, your altitude from the terrain, vertical speed, horizontal speed, and biome you're in, so you can collect this as much science as you can every time you change bio. Now this is handy because now you do not need to go to map mode to see how high your orbit is or how when you're launching how high your apoapsis. I keep on printing L in apoapsis. Please stop it. Um, okay now we go on to show you what else. This will give you useful information. Now I love the information that Kerbal Redux mod gives. It is Brilliant. It is, I think, even think it surpasses the mech jeb, but mech jeb has things that this one does not. 
and we'll get into that in a moment. See, it gives you orbital information, surface, vessel information, which is cool. And one extra thing I like about this, when you're launching, it tells you your atmospheric efficiency of your launch. So if you want to perfect your own manual launch up into orbit, you can use this. Now let's get rid of them. I had, you can, you can edit all these, make them how you want them, put information that you want from there. But we won't do that because we're going to go on MechJip. Now open MechJip and what the hell? Look at all this. You've got functions for days. And it says incent guidance. And guess what? It doesn't just guide you. It actually gets you up into orbit. This is cheating. Well, you could say it's cheating. But all NASA's launches are done by computer. So why not Kerbal Space Program? Okay. Let's go quickly through this function and we'll do a mission, go into the man, landing and return to Kirby. All with MechJet. We will not touch the controls at all, except for the MechJet. Okay, send guidance. Now I want to get into orbit to 100 kilometers or circular orbit. So there'll be 100 in there. Inclination, you can do prevent overheats. We do want our engines to blow up, so it's put in there, but I don't think they will anyway. You can limit terminal velocity. That'll, that is a good one to use because if you've got a very fast rocket, high thrust to weight ratio, this will make sure you do not, you do not exceed the terminal velocity. If you exceed the terminal velocity, your drag will increase exponentially and your efficiency up into orbit will be terrible. Now, this isn't perfect. Let's talk about efficiency. Let's click surface and show that i can leave that up there and we'll see the efficiency of the mech jeb you can edit your ascent path to make it more efficient but we're just going to use the default now you can force a roll which i think this is at and that put me off when i first tested this because i didn't realize it was a Engaged. You got auto stage. You do not need to stage. You can click the auto stage off to do it yourself, and so forth and so forth. Now I'm going too far into this. Let's engage the autopilot. And the first thing you, the only thing you have to do is press space one to engage your launch. You see the thrust is up on an apple. I was pointing with my finger, and you can't see. And we're ready to go in five, four, three, two, one, auto launch. <laughs> Now I said the rocket is slow, I will do this in fast forward mode. Okay, now we are in space and you saw that the ascent guidance worked absolutely brilliantly. The efficiency I noticed wasn't that great. The rocket was a bit heavy. The thrust weight ratio was low. I know it was design things. I just threw this together on paper. I knew it would work. 
and I tested it again to orbit, and that worked. But now we're going to test to see if Megjep can get us to the man. And we can't use the ascent guidance for that. Let's go back to Megjep, and you can see you've got these extra controls. Let's talk through them. Attitude control, I've never used this. It is something that you use with your RCS. We haven't got RCS on here. I've never tried to use this, so I'll let you get the hang of that. You can make a custom window with controls or, well, your own custom window. And then you've got a dock in autopilot. Now we've got no docking port on here and we've got no target to dock to. But this works quite great. You can also tell it what speed to go to and dock at so you don't smash into the station or wherever it is. Now we have landing guidance. This is brilliant. You can land a VAB, kiss C pad. You can choose a target on the map, and you can get your rocket to land a target. Or land somewhere, perhaps somewhere close if you want an emergency landing. But we'll come back to that when we're going to land on the moon. Okay, maneuver node edit editor. When you create the maneuver node, you can edit it through here. RCS balancer. Rendezvous autopilot. Excellent tool to rendezvous. With a spacecraft, you don't have to do anything. Rendezvous Planner. This will help you plan rendezvous. And I believe it will actually help you. Let's see if we can use the man as an example. Choose the man. Set this target. Yes. You can align planes. Establish new orbit at... 200 kilometers. I'm not sure. Let's F5 this. So we can revert... Back to this, if it doesn't go, if it goes pear shape. No, we don't want to do that. See, it gives us maneuver node. Maneuver planner, okay. No, we want to do that. We'll cancel that maneuver node. And that one. Yeah, it gives you a plan to make things easy. You have a rover autopilot as well. If you build a robot, a robot, a rover, and get the words out, and control him, tell him what, what heading to go, what speed to go, and you can add targets and waypoints. I could not get the waypoints to work in an earlier version. They may have been fixed since then, or may not have. And then you've got settings, smart SES. This is a cool one. Let's go out of map mode. Have a look at the rocket. Now, if I click surface. Hello. Anybody there? Target. Advance. The rotation. Um, I see. Yeah, surface. Now that'll point me forward for the sur surface. You can see this is going the opposite way then. If I go into orbit, which we are, we can go to prograde, the direction we're traveling. Retrograde, where we're not traveling. We can point to the normal, which is up from our orbit. Anti-normal, radial, which then is away from the planet. And anti all which is opposite. All these markers are in Apple since update 0 0.90, which is cool because you do not need to look for that. Now turn that off. You can also navigate yourself to a node. Wherever that is. I will turn that off for now. Because we don't need it. We're going to let MechJeb do all the controls. You have space plane guidance as well. Never used that. I assume you can do auto landing. I don't think it was available when I last used MechJeb properly. Transitron. Never used. Panic button. I think this is for when you're doing something like on the landing. You keep vertical, or you keep surface, keep orbit, or whatever. Keep your speed, etc. Now, Delta V starts. This is what we want. It's telling us that we have enough Delta V to get to the moon and back to Kirby. So let's go do that. I'll let you mosey on around this there are tutorials that go further into all these controls i will not go too deep because we're just going to use this to go and get to the man 
So we've got Maneuver Planner. And let's close that out of the way. And what we want is... You can transfer to another planet, but that's to another planet. It does not work going to the moon, man or the Minmas. So what we're going to do, we're going to off man transfer to target. Create and execute. I think we still have the man as a target, yes. And she's has created a maneuver node. If you click, you press create and execute, it will create the maneuver node and execute it. If you want to do the maneuver node yourself, if you want to execute the maneuver node, maneuver yourself, you can click create node and just follow maneuver as you would normally in KSP. So we'll let this go on, There's probably a quick fast forward. Oh. And yeah, the maneuver has been completed by the computer. And we're on our way to the man. Now, if you noticed, we're actually gonna crash into it because as I said, there was no option to go to plan to go to a man. There may be another way to do it, but what I'm planning on doing, if I plank the rocket at the pro grade vector, just thrust up slightly. And wait until you peri ups. Okay, that's good. Uh, no, actually, let's reduce that peri ups a bit. Now, I did say I was going to use Mech Jib completely. Yes, I lied. But only because this bit I could not get to work otherwise. Okay, that's high enough apapsis. Right. Now we have maneuver note to. We have maneuver to get. Um, we have a sphere of influence to get to. This is going to take us five hours. I'm not going to do a video that long. So what can we do about it? Well, as you know, in this game, you can do time warp. So if I go to... I knew it's your somewhere. Warp helper, that's him. And see, he's five hours away, but this warp helper will give you time to these times. Now I want to go to the Sol transition and lead time zero seconds, let's give it two seconds so it'll stop the game warp as soon as we get two seconds before this. So we click warp, it'll automatically warp us to that point and in no time as if by magic we are approaching the man, the sphere of influence. Come on, we're all there. And within two seconds. From God, still in warp. And we are now within the influence of the man. Nothing can stop it now as it drags us down towards its surface, where we're going to narrowly miss it and go back to the orbit around Kirby. And we don't want that. No, so we've go back to Maneuver No Planner and looking for circular eyes. Your orbit, which is here, circular eyes. And click when at your periapsis, which is here. And if I create node, it creates a node there. You can do it manually, as I said. Or, and then you can execute node. You can actually create your own node and tell MechJeb to execute your own no maneuver nodes. But we're going to let MechJeb do all the work for us. So do that. Now, where is the man? And through these nodes, it'll automatically time warp. So there's no waiting for them all. You can also turn time warp off if you want to spend several days 
playing this game? It's all up to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. As you can see, this is rather handy, you know. Up it down. We are now entering orbit around the moon. This is a momentous occasion where the first robot will be the first being the set foot on the man. I was trying to think of something funny to say, but ah, uh, never mind. Things escape me sometimes. I think my brain is made of a sieve. Okay, now we're in orbit. We want to land. So let's click up the landing guidance. And if we pick a target on the map. Now we want somewhere that's nice and flat because I don't think Mech Jeb can handle it. We could go into crater. Let's go on the edge of the crater. Zoom in a bit. Now let's stay in this, so if we go but there. Land the target. And now, you won't get any maneuver nodes for this because this is a bit too complex for it. But it's all done with this. Okay, once we come out of time warp, remind me to reduce, to lower the landing gear. Okay, it's aligning itself. It's going to change its inclination because it's not perfectly straight. It's not on the orbital path. Now it's going to go fire retrograde to reduce it. And you see it showing where it is going to land. Now these won't line up straight off because we need to use the thrust to reduce our speed so we can actually land at that position. Now that's okay because this will all be automatic and there should be no worries. Hopefully we'll put all our faith into Mechjib and let's, land, let's lower those landing gears like I said. Come on, think man, think. Now landing this you match up, I have to warn you, may not be the most efficient, but it is the easiest. And you see it's done a very regressive burn to get itself down to there. Now let's make sure we're not gonna land inside a crater. That would kill us. Or any slopes for that matter. How we can bring itself down gently. I hope, I hope, please do not crash us. We do not deserve to die, not at this stage, not coming to this far. All that work we put in, pressing buttons on Mech Jeb. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can shut up now. <laughs> uh, we're coming down, we can see our shadow now on the man surface. And do not worry about these boulders, they still have no physics. So they're not going to affect us at the moment. I'm not sure about the update, the version 1. I went and landed in a nice scenic spot. Mountains all round. Crater's close enough to explore. Whew, I thought it wasn't going to stop then. Oh yes, by the way, you can set down the touchdown speed. And at the moment it's 0.5, which is really slow. You have to be careful, you don't want 
Yeah, say if you were on a very low pla low gravity plant or man or moon, you can set that quite low, so you just come down very gently. And you see as well, it came straight down vertically on a slope, and that was not good. If this slope was a bit too high, then it would have tipped over. So it's not always perfect. So that done, we've actually landed. Let's get Jeb out on EVA. Okay, EVA. He looks really happy. Now what's he going to do? He's going to plant a flag, of course. And what's he going to write? Make jab. The bloody mod stole my job. <laughs> I'll press return. I was going to bet I quit on that. But yes. Read the black. The bloody mod stole my job. Meg Jeb. <laughs> yes, Meg Jeb will take the jobs of all your curvils. At least the ones that are flying. They can't do science at the moment. I suppose that could be added. So let's go back into our pod and we can show our. See if Meg Jeb can get us back. Retract the ladder. Okay, we don't need landing guidance anymore. But we do need the ascent guidance again. Now let's reduce this to 20 kilometers. Engage. And it quickly engages us. Those must have run out. Because it a couple of them and we delete them because reducing your weight makes sense. And you see it's doing a more aggressive gravity turn with this very quickly because there's no atmosphere, obviously. So it knows what it's doing. Now, I'm guessing that the guy who created this mod, or he got the information and put all these numbers in, which would give you all the stats for all these Caribbean bodies. And so you can and create a proper ascent path for all these rockets. For, or not the rockets, sorry, for all these planets and moons. Now, that must have taken quite a while. Either that, or he's put some algorithm or something in there I do not know I do not pretend to know I'm not a programmer I'm an engineer I expect these things to work all these computers and everything to their specifications labeled on the box and so far Mechjeb has not failed me except for the Delta V in the VAB hopefully that will be fixed during version 1 of Kerbal Space Program Okay, we're in orbit now. That was easy, that was quick. Now, if I go back to Urua Planet, there's one here. Return from a moon. And it gives you approximate final apoplepsis. Now we want to return back to Kerbin. And I always know that 30 kilometers inside the atmosphere is brilliant for aero braking. It'll reduce our speed. And make sure we come from orbit of Kerbin back down to the surface. So Mechjep, create and execute that maneuver. Here it goes. Let's have a look at the map. See, he's already created the maneuver. As well escape the man. And they will enter the atmosphere over there. Now it's the go. We haven't got an ap a periapsis on Mercurbin, so I'm not sure if that's going into the planet. We'll have a quick look when we change the sphere of influence. But right now, a time fast word, please, of leaving the man.
Okay, so now we have entered the atmosphere. Everything is slowing down as the terrain below is rendering. I'm going to see. Okay, right, we're going to jettison. And if you saw the map as well, as I'd shown you, we had no periapsis, which meant that the rocket, the mechjeb, did not give us the correct return. Now it's not going to be 100%, never it's going to be 100%, but it works quite well as it is. And you could always create another maneuver to correct its trajectory, but we're just going to rely now on our parachute. Now since we jettisoned that rocket there, we have now haven't got any mech chip control as it disappears, as it burns up in the atmosphere and disappears from existence. Jeb is really happy now. It has near yeah, he thinks he's got his job back. Meg Jeb is gone. He's got his job back. He can now fly all the rockets. Let's fast forward time now to land. Now we haven't covered much on the Kerbal Engineer, but look up here. I'm not sure yeah you as most of you should know, the parachute opens at 500 meters above the surface. And you have to come out with time warp normally, otherwise your rocket rips apart 500 meters up. And that altitude terrain is perfect for that. So you never rip your rocket to pieces again. Now that's done, let's go all the way to the bottom. And we can have Mech Jib then out on EVA. Thank you, everybody. We're bringing them back. Okay, EVA. Land the flag. Now he's really ecstatic. He's so ecstatic, in fact, that he's going to put a flag up stating his thing. I knew Mac Jeb was useless. He will never beat me. at my game and that's true because although mech jeb is brilliant it's the perfect tool i will not use it to replace jeb because i i'd rather him fly the rocket than mech jeb it has its uses like the sas controls are perfect if you want to do certain maneuvers but it's not what i want okay let's get him back in there and also, if you wonder what this is down here, it's lamp ambient mod, light ambient mod. Now, as you know, if you've played this game before, it comes really dark. And I think this is the normal light level for this situation. You can use this to brighten it up. I'm using it because if you record a video, people can't see, and it's perfect. Unless I light the craft up, and it's gonna be a nice, beautiful picture. But not normally, this is an engineering program. Anyway, thank you for watching this. If you enjoyed this or want to see more of these engineering mods, click that like button. Also subscribe because I will be doing mod show more mod showcases for your engineering toolbox. And I will see you next time. Or if you want, put a comment down below. Ask, tell me what mods you think I should include as the engineer's toolbox. That's great. I will see you next time. Trust me, I'm an engineer. <laughs>